Brian Terrian here from the Disability Digest with two tips for firing your Social Security Disability Attorney. So here at the Disability Digest we have a course with instructions that teaches you how to fire or release your Disability Attorney. It is your right. It's not a complicated process. It's pretty easy to do. But in having this course, we get feedback from people about why they want to fire their Social Security disability attorney or non-attorney representative. And frankly, the reasons why they want to do it, in my opinion, are not just and it's not the correct thing for them to do. So the first thing that I advocate to people is really understand why you're firing somebody and is it for the right reasons. Commonly, what happens is individuals are frustrated. Um, the, the two top reasons that I've found in collecting information is that they've been denied a second time at, at the reconsideration. So they had their application filed, denied, and then the reconsideration appeal was denied. And they're frustrated. They're like, I got denied again. Well, the reality of it is at the reconsideration phase, it's around 11% approval rate. I mean, right? 11% is tough to get any case approved. And I don't even know how solid that Social Security statistic is holding up um, in today's environment. So realistically, to get approved there is, it's not realistic. The second area where I see people get frustrated is they're waiting for their Social Security disability hearing. And they're waiting for 12 or 18 months and they don't have a hearing yet and they can't understand why their representative is not able to get them an earlier hearing date and they've been waiting. Well, it's a wait and there's very few things you can do to shortcut that. Certainly we've found um, some areas in the system that we've been able to exploit but it's not for everybody so you have to wait. So what it really comes down to in my opinion is this is expectations and if you understand the expectations and what your chances of getting approved at each step of the way and you work out a communication plan with your disability representative then you're going to be fine now here here's the problem that a lot of people um, can potentially run into which is if you release a disability representative and they've done your initial application and filed your reconsideration and you just are annoyed that you got denied and you thought you should have been one of those 11 percenters and you're going to fire them, <clears throat> they have the right to file what's called a fee petition. It's a form SSA 1560 where they submit it to Social Security and they can request to get paid on the work that they've done. Stay with me on this, because this, this has been a case killer for people. If they request, say, $2,500, let's say $3,000 that season. They say, we've done $3,000 worth of work on this. Here's the phone calls we've made. Here's the emails we've sent. Here's the forms that uh, we've submitted. Here's the medical records we've reviewed, in which most people that practice this work keep track of that, and they submit that to Social Security. They would be likely to get paid on that. I mean, the ones that we've had here, we haven't lost one uh, since we've been doing this since 2006. We win them all. Uh, and maybe that's a fluke, I don't know, but even if it was 90%. So here's, here's the issue for a disability applicant. You have $6,000 in possible fees to be paid out. If your first attorney that you fired is sitting in position for three thousand and then you want to go shop your case to somebody else and say here's my case i would like you to take it and somebody has got a fee petition that's you know uh, that is going to be filed on it and they haven't released their fees second attorney's only working for three thousand well okay three thousand they've got to go to hearing maybe they'll take it but there's a lot of cases out there right now and somebody would rather go to court and make $6,000 than they would to go to court and make $3,000. So to conclude, here's my point. Make sure in advance of hiring a disability representative that you follow some of the guidance that we've provided here so that you have good selection if that's the direction you're going. And then once you have one, get your expectations in line and understand 
like what's the reality of getting approved, what's the communication plan with your disability representative, and if you are in a situation where you're frustrated, do what you can to work it out with them. That's really the best situation. Most people that do this work, they're hardworking people, they have good intent. Um, now, here's the situation. I will say, if somebody screwed up that's representing your case, they missed the deadline, um, you know, they were supposed to request medical records, uh, any of the stuff that you've learned uh, that should be done, like in our course that we have, the disability approval course, it teaches you exactly what needs to be done to get your case approved. If they haven't done any of that, that's pretty. That's a pretty solid uh, grounds to fire them because they aren't going to be able to substantiate the work that they've done in filing um, a, a form SSA one five six zero a fee petition. So bit long-winded, but it could save you like thousands of dollars and a lot of aggravation. So I hope this helps. Stay tuned for more. Hey, listen, if you like the work that we do, give us a thumbs up, share the video, send it out to others, um, help them get through this process peacefully, stress-free, be safe out there.